are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. You in the car? Are you rolling around? Yeah, pardon me. Um, no, nah, I gotta go to a, a gender reveal. So um, I just pulled over on the side of the road. I'm I'm in the stick, so maybe it was me. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I have no clue. But but you here now, so that's all yeah. that matters, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 You're Thank here you. Here now. So congratulations to the gender reveal that we're yeah. having. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not my gender reveal. So let me. Let me. <laughs> Let me clarify that before y'all say Sammy got a baby on the way, but somebody did to me, um, you know, is having a gender reveal, so. Well, I appreciate you for taking the time out to still sit with me in the course. process of going to the gender reveal. Of course, you know? of course. So, you know, the last time we spoke, you was we was talking about Everlasting Tour. You gave yeah, me man. exclusive to yep. the Everlasting Tour that sold out completely I'm everywhere. So humbled by that, so humbled by that. As you should be. I mean, but you're a humble person anyway, Sammy. Thank you. I appreciate you're just, that. You're just a humble person. Like, your energy, your vibe is always amazing to be yeah, around, I, honestly. I, I, God, God appreciates a humble spirit. So, you know, I try to walk in godly form at all times. Absolutely. So, let's talk about how did the tour Everlasting, like, sell out without actually having, like, that radio record? Um, and little to no promotion, for real. Like, I think a lot of that was via social media. And, you yeah, know, my, my team. My, yeah, my whole, yeah, shout out to God and his grace and mercy. Shout out to my team, um, Empire. Shout out to uh, my publicist, Monique, um, my management team, the firm. Um, you know, we, 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 we're not deep, but we're efficient. You know what I'm saying? And then I have the mm -hmm. most loyal, uh, diehard fan base in the world, you know? Um, no matter how long I'm gone, no matter the hiccups and obstacles and barricades that I have to go through, they're, they're waiting for me. So it, it doesn't take a lot, you know? Like, we didn't even have promotion for this Sammy album that just dropped. I didn't even know it was out. Like, a fan told me it was out. I knew it was in the works. And, you know, we, we cracked the top ten in the country. So I just have some real, the Sammy lovers, man, they ride hard for me. It don't really take a lot. Absolutely. I got it playing in the background. If I don't know if you can hear it, but I do have it playing in the background. I actually still had the CD. So I didn't know, like, I didn't even know that it was not streaming on all platforms. Because I, yeah. I personally still had the CD. And then I just happened to come across your story. And you was like, listen, y'all got to ask Dallas Austin when yeah. he's going to release it. Leave me alone. I don't know. I don't know yet. <laughs> but it just seems like you're as excited as everybody else because when I hopped on your story yesterday, you cleaned into your album and everything. I was jamming to it. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 because that was the missing piece to the puzzle. Like now, every album, all all four albums of my life, from the bottom to the top, Sammy, Coming of Age, Everlasting, all four are now out for everybody for the rest of you know time. I just felt like it was imperative to get that on all streaming platforms because you know, and then. I don't think people understand the business. I don't own the masters to that project. Mm -hmm. Dallas Austin does. Now, Coming of Age, Everlasting, everything that I've done since that project is me. But that project, I had to go through Dallas, and he had to call Motown and get the sessions and remaster it. So it was a process, you know? And um, it was a little frustrating. I don't like not having control over my own right. destiny. But with this project, you know, I had to reach out to Big Bro, and he made it happen. So I'm super happy that Dallas Austin took key. He told me he was getting some threats in the DMs from my fans, too. So uh, I'm happy that it's out. I'm just happy that it's out. I wasn't caring about charts or album sales. I just wanted it to be able, uh, wanted my fans to have access to it. Absolutely, because, I mean, I know that you're having a listening party for it tomorrow. Yeah, Dallas just called right me. I got to yeah, I got to call him back when I get off live. Uh we 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 going to party tomorrow 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Um I don't know if I'm going to do it on his live or in my live, but we are definitely partying. We just going everybody get some champagne, some wine, some, and take some shots or whatever. And just have a good time, man. Um I I felt like uh you should be my girl. Come with me slow. Those records were so imperative to people's lives in that moment in time. It's time to celebrate now that they can go on any social platform and listen to it. Absolutely. So let me ask you this, because somebody had posed this question to me um, right before I was going to do my show last Friday. And for you, I think you're just ahead of the curve in general, <clears throat> how you market your, you know, market your music as a as an artist in general, as a businessman and, a, as, and as an artist. Like, I just think you're really ahead of the curve because you, you do everything without radio records. You do. You yep. just have your team and y'all just move. I guess yep. y'all came up with a formula. And yeah, it's it just working. Work and y'all stick yeah. with it, right? Yeah. So, um, my question is: with the whole quarantine and everything involving co uh, COVID, do you feel as though that artists are going to have to maneuver a little bit differently when it comes to promoting their records after this pandemic? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, 
I, I see the thing is I had an advantage when 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 my ex manager took everything from me back in two thousand nine. Mm -hmm. I, I was forced to the internet before the industry. The industry became so internet driven. So right, I right. was I was working a lot, a lot of mixtapes dot com, datpiff dot com, Spinrella. Um, hell, if you wanted to risk getting the the, the virus, limewire dot com. I was putting my music right, all right. over the internet because I didn't have a deal, I didn't have a label, I didn't have a manager, I didn't have a, a, a team, I didn't have radio. So I already knew how to move on the internet before everyone caught wind of it. So now. I've been ahead of the curve. Instagram is actually the very source that brought me back four years ago when I went viral in the shade room for the first time. So um, I think the quarantine is forcing us to get creative and forcing us to be innovative and find our own way. It's the wild, wild west out here. You know, you just have to find a way to be connected to your fans. Me, I'm, I'm like that anyway. You know, I, I let them kind of tell me what songs to pick, what songs to cut, you know? It's, it's very right, personal right. With, with, with my fans. We're very intimate. So, um, I think, yeah, being quarantined has, has challenged but opened the eyes that it's more work, self, that we have to do and put in to get our music out there to the people. It's dope that you say that because I was just having a conversation with my friends uh, from Dope in the Garage. So I don't know if you, you know, know a few of them from Dope in the mm -hmm. Garage. But yep, yep. We I, I did something with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were all <clears> having a conversation. And I think the one thing that I said in in regards to COVID and being creative and being innovative to tap on what you said, I feel like we all just have to go back to what it was that caused us to be hungry from the beginning. Yeah. You People know? got lazy, man. We, I, I come from the where We used to go city to city, promo for radio station, radio station, did a lot of free shows. I kissed and hugged babies <laughs> in stores, touched the people. And, and now we're forced to, to do that again. And I love it. You know what I'm saying? I never deviated from that anyway. I think, again, that's why it doesn't take – I don't have to have a number one record in the country. I don't have to have a hit record on the radio to get millions of streams and millions of views and keep people engaged. I'm, I'm, I'm unapologetically myself. Um, I'm very transparent. I'm very honest. I'm very right, humble with right. it, and my fans, glory be to God, they, they embrace all of me. You know what I'm saying? It surpassed, I think, music at this point. I think they've actually loved the man that I've become, and I love them for love, appreciating the human being that, I, that I've evolved to. So to say that, like, to say that your fans have watched you grow, which is absolutely true, I'm a fan. So I, to watch you grow, like, I watched you grow, you know what I mean? Like, I, I played yeah. it for on my Instagram and of me telling you, how you sung to me when I was 14 years old. So that's amazing. That's and love. Even full, full circle. circle. Again. Yeah, full circle. Yep, yep. <laughs> again. So <clears throat> with, with this, you know, why do you think it's really important for you to show your fans who you really are? Why do you think it's, it's important to show your truth? It's one thing to live in your truth, but it's a completely different mm. ballgame to actually show your truth. And um, when I say that, you have, you know, we hop on Instagram, you, you're um, singing us crazy. A song that yeah. you had just wrote, you know, yeah. you're giving us poetry at this point, poetry yeah. that you literally just wrote and say, you know what, I'm gonna hop on Instagram and I'm gonna talk about this and I'm gonna just read it. <clears throat> and it's like a sense of vulnerability, you know, honestly, showing somebody yeah. like showing us the beginning if, stages of it. Yeah, to know me is to understand that I'm very transparent, very vulnerable, especially as a man. And I don't know if it's still, I'm not big into astrology, but I am a Pisces to the core. I'm very mm -hmm. emotional, I'm very sensitive. Um, but I'm very spiritual. So, like, if I write a record at my desk in my room and the, the topic crazy, for example, that record, I knew in my spirit it was a special record. You know, like, I, I, as soon as I sung it to myself, I surprised myself. Like, I'm a fan of myself sometimes. I'm like, good job. That was a dope-ass record. Let me share it, you know, a, a little snippet. And then it's almost like at a million views on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? So whenever I do pull the trigger on that record, I know it's going to change the world in the R&B world in a good way because it's special. Poetry, I've always written poetry. I just never really shared it with anybody. So I was like, you know what? God has put us in the season of stillness, I think, to tap into um, certain things that we withhold. Maybe because we don't have time. I haven't written a poem in years. So I finally mm -hmm. wrote one. I wanted to share it. Um, being vulnerable and transparent makes you human and i think right now in the world uh where we're, we're taught to filter out our blemishes and try to just show our highlights um i don't like that i, I really don't want to put this up the other day i don't want to die with secrets i want people to know like my insecurities uh my growth my imperfections my flaws and then see the beauty in that and see how i how i became the man that i am and then i'm still becoming i'm forever learning forever evolving 
And uh, I want to matter to the world, surpass musical accolades. I, I, you know, okay. one, day, one day I will leave this earth, you know, hopefully no time soon. But I want people to say that he was a beacon of light. He loved everybody. He gave out peace and light and gems while he was alive. You know, it's not just about my musical gifts. And that's why I'm so vulnerable and transparent. Absolutely. So what does Sammy ultimately wants to be remembered for? If anything happens today or tomorrow, God yeah. forbid. Well, what does Sammy really want to be remembered for? Oh, easy. Um, uh, godly. I just I just hope that I've introduced somebody to God. That's that's all we was put here to do. You know, we was put here to just spread love. And God is love. So um, if, if, if I die today and tomorrow my Instagram is lit, I hope that they're talking about my spirituality and that I gave out so much love and, and so much positive vibes, not just my music. So um, that's that's what we're here to do. It's love. Be love. Everything else that I do outside of that is extra credit. Me being a Absolutely. celebrity and singing and performing in front of 20,000 people and getting this love, I'm so humbled and grateful for it. But if I didn't save a soul, if I didn't introduce a soul to God, then I failed. So are we going to hear about this in your book, Good to Know? We going to see this side of Sammy? And good to know. Um, well, good to know that that I started that seven years ago, and now I'm finally going to see it through. Um, mm -hmm. That's about letting women into the insight of my mind and most men mind. We're very different, you know. So I'm not encouraging a woman to think like a man, and we men can't think like you all. You all are born to love. We're kind of molded to love. You all run off emotions. We're like taught to be tough and don't cry and be prideful. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 insight to getting to the happy median and understanding one another. I spent so much time in my past relationships trying to prove a woman right, or excuse me, wrong, and she's trying to prove herself right. That's stupid. That's child's play. I don't do that no more. Now I listen with the intent to understand you. You know what I mean? Even if I don't agree, even if I don't agree with the feeling, now I can cater, I can cater excuse me, to the feeling because I took my time to understand you. And that's all it's about. I want to understand my lady. And I want my lady to understand me. You know what I'm saying? So the book is just allowing a woman into the mindset of a man. Like, we are simple-minded. We are a little childish. We are a little uh, immature. It takes us a while to grow up. We're not naturally emotional, so we don't know what you're thinking. You might say, I'm fine. And really, you're not fine. But our dumbass is just really going to leave you alone. You know what I'm saying? We should have kind of, <laughs> we should have dug a little deeper. So that's what good to know right. is about. As far as my spiritual side, before it's all said and done, I'm definitely doing like a gospel album. I can't wait to um, to, to indulge in that. Uh, I started in the church. I'm going to finish in the church. So, um, Absolutely. When, it, when, it's, when, it's, when, it's, when it's the right time and I feel it, I definitely want to do an entire gospel project. Isn't your mother a gospel singer? Yeah, she um, she mm -hmm. was a gospel singer, professional gospel singer, before she had my little big head itself. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, stopped, I, stopped, I stopped her career, and then um, I guess she passed the torch, literally. Absolutely. So I'm here for that. I would love a gospel album from you. First of all, your runs are amazing. Anybody uh, that you. knows, like, you know, all the ladies are in here going crazy right now. So I'm I see the little heart. I see the little heart eyes down there. I appreciate it. Exactly. You see them, right? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Saying, Praise the Lord in regards to your mother being a, a, a gospel singer. Yep, yeah. Yep. But I see I'm seeing the comments and everything. But I'm pretty sure that most of these ladies can uh, resonate with me when I say that whenever they listen to a Savvy record, I promise you it sounds like you're singing directly from the speakers to us. Yeah. Um, and maybe I'm biased because you sung to me before. But what I'm saying <laughs> is I can honestly say whenever I listen to a record, I just uh, any record of yours, I just kind of go off into a little deep thing that is just like, <clears throat> wow, Sammy is really singing to me right now. Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's my mission though. Um I want I want every woman on the earth when they play a Sammy record. Or at my show, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm like big on eye contact. I believe that's the window to the soul. So I, I kind of like intimidate sometimes my fans, but not trying to be a creep. But when I meet them, I give them the best hug I got in me. Uh, I give them the best handshake I got in me. I give them the respect and the eye contact that they deserve. And when I'm in the booth, I don't, you know, I don't do the auto tune and the tricks. I sing with the gift that God gave me because music is spiritual. Everybody listens to some type of genre of music. That's the dopest shit ever to me. Like, I've been gifted a talent that everyone listens to. Now, it might not be R&B. You might listen to hip-hop. You might listen to gospel. You might miss, listen to rock and roll. But I speak a universal language. So when I'm in the studio, 
I make sure I put my feelings and my passion. It could be sex, it could be love, it could be pain, it could be remorsefulness. I want you to feel me though mm-hmm. when, you, when you hear me sing, and I want you to feel like I'm singing directly to you and for you. And I think that's why I've been able to do it for so long is because I'm not just in your ears anymore. I think I'm in your hearts. I think I'm in your spirits because my fans are definitely in my heart and in my spirit, you know? Everything I do, I do for them. I do with them in mind. Like, I put my fans before a lot of things in my life. So um, I'm glad that I connect that way. Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad you connect that way too, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it. So uh, going into your uh, latest record that you have out right now, uh, Friend Zone. Yeah. Let's talk friend about zone. Friend Zone. Okay. Make sure y'all, make sure so y'all friend download zone is it. About, yes, make sure y'all go check it out right now. It's on all streaming platforms, okay? Yep. And download yep. it for sure. Yep. But uh, Friend Zone. Friend zone. I don't know why I keep wanting to call it friendship zone, but friend zone yeah, friend is zone. Um, about an actual person. This was someone that you, a best you know, friend of mine. Some, actually a friend. Yeah, we're besties to this, to this day at this moment as we speak. Yeah. Um, she knows who she is. Uh, um, I, I know her for over a decade and she's a beautiful woman. So there always was like a, maybe like a, a, a silent attraction, but I never mm-hmm. exercised it. We've never crossed any barriers, you know what I'm saying? And um, I've, I've always been there for her when she's going through her ups and downs, and she's been there for me through the relationships. Um, friend zone is something everyone can relate to. If you're a man, some, some, some men have been friend zone because it's not mutual. Some women have been friend zone because it's not mutual. In my case, it's mutual, mutual but we opted to remain best friends opposed to one day taking it romantically there and it not working, and now we've messed up the foundation we once had and I, I just wanted i wanted to write about it because i think that it's uh it's mutual and i think that it's universal i think everyone can relate to it and uh once i had her blessing she was like oh, i think you should put it out you know so so what made you say it's, it's about that time to tell this story like this i feel good i feel great mm-hmm. to talk about our story and put it in a in a song because a, a lot of the times especially when it comes to you and your music you're really that's when you we really get you the genuine, yeah, you, what yeah, you're, I don't, you're dealing with, what you're really going through. <clears throat> we get it through the music. So what made you say, now is the time to tell this story? Um, Because I'm at peace with where we are. I'm at peace. <laughs> like, if she got married tomorrow, I'm super happy for her. He better treat her like, you know, the diamond that she is. Um, and I, I wanted that part out of me, you know? When I come to peace with things, breakups, heartbreaks, whatever I'm going through, uh. I put it all into my music. Like, that's my journal. If you ever want to know what Sammy's going through, it's not going to be on Instagram per se. I'm not going to be subliminally tweeting somebody or I don't do that. I think that's childish. But in my music is where I can be brutally honest and I can tell on myself in the good stuff, in the bad stuff, in the sex stuff, in the holy <laughs> stuff. You know what I'm saying? I let it all out in my music. So uh, this was a thing I wanted to get out of me, you know? And it's not a secret. Like, if she knows how I feel. I know how she feels. People around us understand. Like, they see it. So it was like, you know, mm-hmm. let the world have it too. Because it's somebody that can relate to friend zone. Absolutely. I think we like all that should have been a song. Somebody. Yeah, but it should have been a song a while ago. So, you know, I, I and I wanted to be that kind of artist that when you hear my music, you're like, damn, why not think of that? Same thing with like crazy. Every woman unfortunately has been called crazy. Every guy has done something <laughs> to make a girl go crazy. Sometimes mm-hmm. we cheated and the girl is acting crazy, but really she's not acting crazy. She's feeling and she's hurting. So, you know, I try to come up with those songs to speak to the world, not just, you know, one demographic, one subject matter. And friend zone to me is something that we all can relate to. Got it. So ladies, I got you. I'm about to ask this question for y'all. So Sammy, yeah. what how can a person get how can a lady get friend zones? And then how can a woman get out of being friend zoned? <clears throat> uh pressuring me to allow her out the friend zone. I don't like I don't like when people have motives, if that makes sense. Like, okay. I like I like a natural, I believe, I, I live by this thing called um, just flow, don't force. I don't like, I like, let it just merge into a, a natural attraction, a natural chemistry, get to know me, vice versa. Um, I, I just don't like to be pressured into anything, you know what I'm saying? I, I really, really like just to go off of a good vibration, a good energy. I'm very simple. I'm not, it don't take a lot to impress me. I, I got a lot going on for myself, so I don't need anything from somebody i'm not incomplete i'm very much whole so i just like a natural organic uh vibe please don't pressure to get to know me you know what i'm saying i'll feel 
the vibe to want to open up to somebody if it's if it's there. So that's a, that's a way to turn me off. And then I don't like when people who wear a mask. Like be yourself. I don't I don't mm-hmm. I hate I hate meeting people, and we're all guilty of it. But I don't want to see the representative. You know, mm-hmm. when I when I date people, like my first date, I might ask you like, tell me something bad about you. I don't want to know like all the good because I'm gonna see that on my own. Tell me like your demons. Tell me your like flaws. I'm gonna tell you mine. And I think that's a way to really, really see the true essence of a person. No, I agree, though. I was just having a conversation actually earlier today because I think that that's important when you can, like, just when you can, like, pour out the the parts of you that you're not afraid, mm-hmm. you know, that you are kind of afraid to talk about, that you are yeah, afraid the to dark show. part. Like, you yeah. know, when, because, I mean, I think with us, we're just in a place of perfection. Like, we always want to show the perfect things about ourselves. We don't yep. ever want to show the in process, <clears throat> the in progress part of us, you know, the things that we're still working on. We never want to show that. So I actually think that's a good, good idea. Next day, yeah, it's a good, out. yeah, it's a good what's icebreaker. Actually, yeah, what's your demons? Just going to throw what? them off. You're going to be like, what? <laughs> but but, but you should you should yeah like what triggers you what 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 you went through what's what's the bad about you and I think that opens up just some real organic rawness that is yeah. is we we spend months trying to hide our demons that's what we spend years sometimes that's why breakups happen those demons been in that man or those demons been in that woman but they've they've hid it of course because they're afraid of the consequences so what if you just put it all on the line like. Once upon a time, I told, like, I went to a girl, I was like, once upon a time, I was a cheater in a relationship. Like, I did not know how to be faithful 100% of the time. I had to actually look at myself and try to figure out why. Like, no woman really wants to hit that on the first date, but you should. Because I don't want you to get smitten with me being spiritual. I open doors for you. I'm getting the tab. I'm a little silly. I'm articulate. Um, I don't want you to fall in love with that because that's just a part of me. Maybe you should know actually some bad about me, too. You know what I'm saying? And see, I can get a better understanding of how I became the man I am. It's through those mistakes and those unfortunate mishaps and those bad decisions that I made that made me this guy. And you should know that about me. Absolutely. That's me. Yeah. Look at all the ladies in here. They're like, <laughs> preach, amen, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's get into Such Is Life, which drops June 5th. June I'm 5th, excited my about fifth studio this. album. Does... Say that again. It's my fifth studio album, uh, Such Is Life, June 5th. Are you excited about that? I'm super. I'm, I'm, it's crazy to say that, man. I've been in the business 21 years almost now. So um, every time I drop an album, it's still that same excitement. It's still that mm-hmm. same uh, nervousness a little bit to hope that, you know, the music resonates with the people. Um, so I'm very excited. I can't wait for the world to hear it. You know, I've been riding to it for some months now, so it's older me, but it'll be new to the world. But it'll be new to everybody else, of course. But yeah. um, I know Sessions Life is about healing. Yeah. So yeah. the whole the whole album is about healing. Is there some things that you feel like you have to <clears> heal from? <throat> are you talking about other people's situations? Are you talking about when when you say healing? What are we actually you know healing from? Is it Sammy? Is it? Yeah, you know you you know how you just asked me like what made me want to finally talk about friend zone with my about my best friend. Um, mm-hmm. I'm completely healed from everything. I have no. I'm not afraid of anything. I have no fear about nothing. So um, the Everlasting album, I was going through the worst breakup of my life. You know what I'm saying? I was madly in love with this girl. I did not want it to end. We just could not get it together. And I had to, like, unlove her, detach from her son. So you heard a lot of hurt in Everlasting. You feel me? This isn't a hurt album. This I'm happy. I'm at peace. My sky function. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just feel good. I, I feel good. So I, uh, it's a, it's a, it's an album to heal. I have a song called Closure, on it's the intro track. It's my favorite track on the album. Mm-hmm. Um, my my ex, the one I was just talking about, we had went a year without talking to each other. We ended on the worst of terms, and I was too prideful to reach out. She was too prideful to reach out. We also thought that it would be toxic to reach out. So one day she texted me. It's like five months ago, and she's like, "Hi, Sam," and I'm like, "Ah, oh, shit, here we go again." Like, I, 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 I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even want to reply. And she was like, "I'm not here to disrupt your peace, but I have some things I want to say." And she pretty much said everything. She sent the novel. It was like this long, you know. In the text, <laughs> it was, what we it was, it was everything that I needed her to say to me, and mm-hmm. then it opened me up to sending the novel back and saying everything that she needed to hear from me. And now, like. 
we're back cool. Not no 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 romance, but she can she can text me now and say, "Hey, I'm proud of you. You're on the Millennium Tour." Or to send news the EP you still jamming. You know she was my biggest fan, so I was I didn't even know she still listened to my music or kept up with me. So I I I'm healed from so many things, and I just touched on topics where um, I'm I'm at peace with it all. So yeah, it's a very it's a, it's a it's a beautiful project, man. Such as life means to accept the good and the bad. It all is a part of the journey. It's all a part of the process. It's all about you know sculpting yourself and molding yourself into this person you aspire to be. You know, so if it's good or bad, such as life, roll with it. Roll with the punches. That's what it means. Absolutely. So talk about closure, though. Do you think it's important mm -hmm. for people to get closure from a relationship? Because a lot of people part. say they don't want, you know, a lot of people say they don't think it's, they should have closure. I, and I always I, say that mm -hmm. I think you should because it'll teach you exactly what it is that you, you know, what it is that you lacked or was what was an advantage in that relationship and vice versa. It'll help you be able to move forward in your next situation without baggage, you know? Yeah. So I always, I, I always uh, think, I think that is personally, you know, important, but some people really... It's I like think it's, it's it's situational. Me, for example, I always thought closure until now was a scam because that one, <laughs> it's a scam, it's a setup. <laughs> yeah, because you, you answer that text or you go out for those drinks or you go out for that one last little dinner date to get it off your chest and then, shit, you might end up back in a relationship. You might end up in the bed with them. Who knows? You know, sometimes it keeps you in a terrible situation that you really need to get out of. However, mm -hmm. this this to me... When, when she texted me, I really was like, this is a scam. This is a setup. Like, life is going good for me, and now she wants to come and ruin my life. But no, nah, it was the best thing ever. I, I prayed about it. I replied, and now we're, we're, I, can, I can check on her, and I can say, hey, how you doing? How's life? Like, how, how, you know, how's little man? So um, it's situational, man. I say that you have to pray for discernment, and if it's in you to to, to want to talk to that person and in hopes to get closure, cool. But I think that it, it's no right or wrong. Sometimes it's best to leave it broken, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's cool. It, it's not because sometimes you can see closure and be let down. That's the that's the sad part. Sometimes right. you still might not get that apology. Sometimes you still might not get that that uh. But I think when we when we talk about that when we when you talk about expecting, you know, because I think you're walking into your closure with the expectation. But I feel like when you're trying to get the closure that you need or trying to give the closure that the relationship deserves, I feel like that you shouldn't even worry about, you shouldn't worry about like, I had a brain fart, but mm -hmm. I feel like you mm -hmm. just shouldn't worry about like what, what the person may say or not say. I don't think that's important. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like when you're going into the situation for closure, get it for what you need it for. Yeah. Not for the expectation of oh I know I'm gonna walk away. There you go. I, I agree. You gotta understand that I agree. you may not get that. I agree. Closure and forgiveness coincides to me. Like people mm -hmm. think that forgiveness is for the other person. No, it's for self. I forgive people that do me wrong so I can move past it. So I'm not a prisoner of right. my past. So I'm not controlled by someone else's uh actions and, and mishaps. So yeah, I think closure as well as forgiveness is for self care. You feel me? So don't just do it so you can move forward. Absolutely. And that's what I would say about anybody looking for closure. It's not about what the other person is giving to you. It's about what you can take from it. And yep. that's it. Yep. Move forward and move on. And that's that. So as far as the Millennium Tour goes, first and mm -hmm. foremost, you got on first and foremost, when we talked last um, at Millennium Tour 2019, I was like, you know, why doesn't why is Sammy not a part of this tour? So you know that was everybody was going up, everybody was so mad about it. The girls was like, no, but Sammy should have been on it. And then on top of that, a lot of people were uh, reaching out to me like, but Sammy didn't come to our tour here. Why was he at the one in Atlanta, but not the one here? <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was some smoke. It was a lot of smoke going but on. It was it was a lot. It was yeah. a lot. But full circle, you are on Millennium Tour 2020. Is it still happening right here in Atlanta, July 11th? Um, now, I don't know about the dates, but the tour has not been canceled. It's just been postponed okay. due to the COVID-19. And, you know, I'm going to say this too on a serious note. Um, my heart and prayers goes out to anybody that's been affected by it directly, indirectly, lost a loved one. Um, it's a serious matter. You know, we did get to do six shows before, you know, we were put on pause. But I'm, I'm blessed, you know, to 
Mm -hmm. um, be a part of it. Uh, I spoke my piece when I wasn't on the first one. You know, respectfully, I'm just passionate. So I felt like because I'm the first child star of my generation, then I definitely should be a part of something called the Millennium Tour. If you didn't call it that, I probably wouldn't have been tripping, but you called it the Millennium Tour. The Millennium Tour, right. <laughs> it came out in 1999, 2000, you know, so, and I was the first one. So um, I'm blessed that they pulled me on board, man. Everyone's on there been showing me mad love, the, the entire staff. Shout out to G Squared Events. And make sure y'all go there for updates as far as the shows, um, as far as the, the, the new updates. But, um, you know, it, it's been a ball, man. I was out there living like a rock star, I'm not going to lie, you know, letting the girls rub me down with the oil and all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> it was cool. It was cool. I missed the road. I do miss tour, you know. Quarantine is not so, so bad. Gonna... But the ladies want to know, cool. are you going to let them um, rub oil down on you this year? Nah, the because now down? now it might be a COVID-20 coming, so we can't, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. We can do a nice little little hug, but um, once we once we get this virus under control, you know, then we can go back to the rub down. But right now, I need to be as safe as possible. Absolutely, um, I think we all need to be yeah. safe as possible for yeah. sure. Um, let me ask you this though, because you know, with everybody with G Square reaching out to you to be a part of this tour, you know, shout you did everlasting. Yeah, shout yep. out to them. <clears throat> but you did everlasting tour. You sold that out by yourself yeah. with your team. You know, you, awesome. um, of course, and then when you performed here in Lloyd's set, during Lloyd's set, you know, you said that it gave the promoters an opportunity to see exactly what, what it do. is that you can bring. So mm -hmm. my question to you, with you being 21 years in this industry, do you still feel like you have something to prove? Do you still feel like you have to prove yourself? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's personal goals that... Um... I have that keeps me hungry like I've, I've never been nominated let alone for a grammy i would love to like that's the super bowl of every you know musician's career if you ever get nominated and win i would like to win because i have my speech ready um <laughs> I, I, that would be awesome but i don't do it for none of that you know what i'm saying like i've had a number one in the country i've had some top tens i've written a number one i've i've, I've got plaques so it's not about that stuff for me. It's just about the longevity. It's about being consistent. It's about being one of the greats. Um, so I guess the only thing that if, if there is anything, if I get a Grammy, I'm going to say when, when I get a Grammy. When you get a Grammy, exactly. Yeah, you I, I really, I really have already... a speech that the world just needs to hear. So uh, yeah, you go, I, you already made I have to, yeah, I can't even just get nominated. I have to win to be able to give my speech. So when I win a Grammy, that probably <laughs> will be the icing on the cake. But everything else, I'm cool. You know, I just want to continue to stay connected to my fans, man. And um, I want to retire music. I think that's another thing I want to control. And by that, I don't mean... I want, you know, sometimes you reach a ceiling and you just, the fans don't care no more. They don't care if you drop the music, you know, you become quote unquote right. irrelevant. I, I, that's, that shit would drive me crazy if I had an album coming out or a project coming out and the fans didn't love me the same way that I'm accustomed to. So I would like to leave the game on a high note. Absolutely. Like, like MJ okay. hit that last shot with the Bulls. That was, <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. It. Yeah, how, my, how how Kobe, you know, rest in peace to, to, to Kobe Bryant, how he had his last game, he dropped 60 on their head in a win. I want to do music like that. I want to give you a classic album and ride off into the sunset that way. So if, okay, so let's say you hit that last shot like MJ with your music. Mm -hmm. Where would Sammy be after that? Because I know you're working on acting now, Misunderstood. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I have a plan. you know about that too, because you said, What's well, that? I never did acting. You mm -hmm. said um in the interview you was like you know I, I said I wanted to act but I didn't say I knew how to act. Yeah. But you've been you've been practicing you've been preparing for it with your videos. Yeah, it's kind of different though. I know it's though. not the same as because, professional because which... because I write my music so when I do a visual, it's easy to convey the message because I wrote it. But when you take a character in a script that you know nothing about, you ha there's a sense now that I shot a pilot. We shot a pilot in LA to this okay. show called Misunderstood. I'm playing this guy named Noah. It's kind of awesome to like tap into a different personality. Um, I had to, in acting class, become vulnerable. You know, I'm real like this. I'm real chilled. I'm real laid back. I'm real kind of like, my aura is a little r and I think I had to be an r and dude because that's my spirit. <laughs> so my acting coach was like, immediately cut that out. Like, cut Sammy out. And I'm like, I don't know how to cut that out. I get that. So, uh, I get that. Uh, acting is definitely a part of it. 
you know, I just launched my own candle line. Um, we have Pure Love and Pure Honey. You can go like to poppinpearlcandle.com if you want your candles. Uh, I have the book. So I'm already setting myself up to diversify my portfolio. So when I do say no to music, I already have these other avenues of income as well as just being great and passionate about other things in motion. Um, I'm 33, so really 40 years old. I want to say bye as uh, Sammy the artist. So I got seven more years. I don't think the ladies are ready for that, Sammy. I'll be 40. I don't think they're ready for that. I just want to, I want, 40, 40, I should have, I, 40, I should have a whole wife, like, I should be in a marriage, I should have kids, I just want to be chilling, you know, and I'll write music, and I'll have acts, and I'll write behind it, you know, and help guide their careers, of course, but I want to leave on a high note, I want to leave with my fans, like, hell no, you still got more in you, I, I don't, <laughs> I'd rather them say that than be like, thank you, because you're wise, you feel me, so, you got seven years more of Sammy the Artist, and then I'm going to fall back and just write and do other things and act and mm -hmm. pop out sometimes. But I want to Pop leave. out from time to time? Yeah, but I want to leave the right way. I just, I can't, I can't, I would not be able to live peacefully knowing that I think I still got some left in the tank for my fans, though. That would drive me crazy. Absolutely. Well, I can I can understand that. So I respect that. I respect yeah. that. At least you have an end, a end game. Because a lot of people don't have an end game. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't have that. And I think <clears> that is the main thing in anything that you do. Know how you start and know how you want to finish. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think about it a lot. Important. I think about it a lot, you know. I, and, and it's funny because seven years sound far, but it, it, time is going by so fast, you know. So um, it's why I'm giving you my best now. I, mean, I just hit my prime now. Like, I, I'm my best records are still inside of me. They haven't come out yet, you know. So that's exciting. Okay. That's Absolutely. Exciting. So um, before I let you go, because I know you got this gender reveal, so I don't mm -hmm. want to keep holding up too much of your time. But I looked at your Instagram post, and I got to talk about this because we got the ladies in the in the chat right now. I looked at one of your posts, and you was having a debate. And the debate said that women get mad over four things. Mm -hmm. The first <clears> thing <throat> is we get upset because we're hungry. Yep, yep. We get upset because we need affection. Facts. And we get upset because we don't have time. Oh, we, we didn't get the time. Yep. And the fourth reason is we get upset because you're upset because you're mad that we're mad at one of those three things. Yep. That's I the, disagree with that. I was, oh wait, so first of all, I was being a little silly. I wasn't being technical, but I've learned in life, food does solve a lot of issues in relationships. Definitely. I a nice little butt rub, you know what I'm saying? Good food <laughs> is awesome. Girls appreciate that. And then time is love. So you give a girl time, that kind of fixes things. So, you know, and then y'all do get mad that we're mad that y'all mad about one of the top three. Dude, I've experienced it. I was like, if you just needed food, you could have just said you was hungry. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I made... why do you think women, if this is for us ladies, because I agree with you on that though. We don't, mm -hmm. like, the thing is we would want these things. And that's for me, I'm a hinter. I don't like to tell you. I want you to know what's wrong with me. Okay? Yeah, I don't want to yeah. tell you this is yeah. what's wrong with me. I want it. I want you to know. I want you to figure it out. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a lot of people are. A lot of girls are saying. A lot of these women are saying. Yes, that that's actually correct. That's yeah. what. Right what what right. girl don't want to be touched? You know, by the guy she loves. What girl don't want time? What girl don't want a nice little meal? You know, like it's simple things. But those things, right. if 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 there's lack in it, then it's a problem. If I'm not giving you the time you want, then you feel like you know, um, that's so that's that, that might, yeah. So. I just, I, we, we were talking and I was like, it's really simple, small things that you can do to keep a woman happy. It's not always the big extravagant things, that's all. My question is though, why can't we just say what we want? Cause like I said, I'm a hinter. Yeah, cause y'all so be thinking we know. Life, we, we don't be knowing. We're stupid. Say that again? We're dumb. Y'all think we're smart. We men are idiots. So we don't know shit. We don't know why you tripping. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we're we supposed mm -hmm. to know we haven't been putting in time. We're supposed to know that we haven't taken you out on date night in a while. We got too wrapped up with our homies or work or Madden or 2K. But really, we're idiots. So once y'all realize how stupid we are, then maybe y'all would express yourselves a little more. Because I know I'm dumb sometimes. Sometimes we're like, oh, yeah, it has been a little minute since we, you know, I got a little comfortable. It's, 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 it's. It's, that's why you got to get the book. Good to know. When you read my book, you'll understand like how dumb we are. We're, we're dumb. Just say it. Just say what so you want. <laughs> say it. That's what I say 
all the time. I'm like, well, I don't know why I can't just tell you I'm hungry. Or why, don't, why I can't just tell you I want affection? I just, I like to hint at it. And I feel like you should figure it out. Yeah, but then don't get mad when we slow, you know, and don't, you know, get it. <laughs> and miss the, miss the hint. We don't know. We're dumb. We're not that dumb, but we're dumb. No, we're just wired different. We're wired different. See, it that's what I'm saying. Wired no, wired. That's what I'm saying. Good to know. Like, you women give off hints. Me, I'm going to just say it. Like, like if I'm a horn dog today, like, babe, I really, really just want to, like, <laughs> have sex all day. I'm going to say it. I'm not about to just walk around in my boxer brief, like, you know, hinting. Nah, I'm going I'm to tell you, I want to have sex. Nasty, crazy sex today. Why? Why should I should say that? That saves a whole lot of time. You already know. It like does. I'm, I'm being a pervert today. If I'm hungry, babe, my stomach growling. I'm starving. That means like let's eat. You know. Women, y'all like to make us guess, and we're not that smart sometimes. So look, I can't argue with that. I cannot argue with that. So. That's all. But I'm attentive, so I really, you know, I don't have those problems, and I'm affectionate. So. If my girl is cooking, I'm keeping a glass with the wine. I'm touching on her butt. I'm kissing on her neck. Like, I'm that touchy-feely guy anyway, though, when I'm with a girl. So uh, I don't lack in that department. I was really trying to put my other fellow kings on game. Like, those three things, you, you consistent in that department, you'll be all right. Absolutely. I agree with you on that. Yeah. So, look, the girls are laughing. It's ladies that's laughing. They're saying guys, <laughs> seeing me guys. <laughs> yeah, I know a little bit. I know a little bit now, you know? Look at you. Look at you, Kenny. Mm -hmm. I look know a little you. bit. So, on that note, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go ahead and get to this gender reveal. But I definitely want to say uh -huh. thank you so much for thank taking you. the time out. Thank you. I love y'all because I'm really – I don't even know where I'm at. I'm on the side of the road. It's like a fall <laughs> to the right some trees to the left. I've just been out here kicking it. You know what I'm saying? But um, I appreciate you, Queen, always, and everybody that, you know, came on live to listen to me talk for however long we've been on here. I appreciate you. Um, my album, Such As Life, comes out uh, June 5th. June 5th. Friend yeah. Zone is out now. Everyone who's been wanting the Sammy album for all these years, that's out also. We, we're on the charts as we speak. Um, the Friend Zone lyric video is out. I'm dropping a new single next month. And I'm, I'm flooding you with content, you know, so stay, stay, stay attached to me. I'm attached to y'all, and I love y'all, and I, I'm so grateful, man, for, for you taking the time out to loan to me your platform. I thank you. No problem. Oh, and you was talking about some books. Um, It was one about manifestation. I cannot remember, but I need the name of that book. I think so, it's the power of manifestation, but when I get to the when I get back to the crib tonight, um, I'll, like, post it on my story or something and DM it to you or whatever. I'll find it and send it to okay. you. Okay. Cool, because I, I got one for you too. Um, I got one for you too. I'm reading "Wishes Won't Bring Riches" by okay. Napoleon Hill. Okay. I think you'll love that book. So uh, yeah, book. let's do let's 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 formulate a little book club. I'm with it. As absolutely. So definitely, thank you, Sammy, and get thank to you. where you're going safe. Be safe, okay? Yeah, I'm like 12 so minutes away from wherever I'm going though. I'm like up the street. I'm just on the side of the street, but I'm somewhere. Okay. I'm close. I'm close. All right. All right. I love y'all. So